So hi guys, I hope you are doing well. This is very amazing session. In this session, we will learn various use cases of underscore in Python and how they can help you write cleaner, more maintainable code. All right, so let's talk about the agenda first. In this session, we will be discuss about single underscores, single leading underscores, double leading underscores, and double leading and trailing underscores. And we will be discuss the importance of underscore when you are declaring a module names. All right. So guys, these kind of stuff we will be learned from scratch. So if you are beginner or intermediate, these kind of concept will help you a lot. And by the end of this video, you will have a solid understanding of how to use underscore effectively in Python projects. All right. So let's get started. So guys, let's go through the various uses of underscore in Python with explanation and examples. So guys, first of all, we will be talk about single underscore. So what is the meaning of single underscore? So guys, using a single underscore, right, we can hold the result of last executed statement in the interactive interpreter. So right now I'm using a Jupyter. So the single underscore is basically used to store the result of last executed cell. Let me show you. So for an example, let's say if I'm going to five minus one. All right. So I will have the answer four. And here, if I'm using underscore multiply by five. So what is the meaning of it? So here, this particular underscore is holding the output of last executed cell, which is four, right? So four multiply by five become 20. All right. And similarly, if I'm going to execute this line of a statement once again, so right now the last executed cell is 20. So if I'm going to run this particular cell once again, so 20 multiply by five, so it's become hundred. All right. So that's how that underscore can hold the last executed cell value. Interesting. And guys, similarly, if I am talking about how to ignore the specific value, right, using underscores. So what it means. So for an example, when we are extracting individual terms from a sequence. Okay. So underscore can be used to ignore a certain value. So let me give you an example so that you can easily understand. So first of all, I am going to define X underscore and another variable name is Z, right? where I'm going to define 10, 20 and 30. So what is happening here? So for an example, if I'm going to print X, right, and I'm going to print Z. So I will have 10 and 30 as an output. All right. So what is happening here? So guys, during the unpacking of item, you can ignore the value using underscore if you want. Interesting. Okay. This is very easy. So right now this underscore ignoring the value of 20. Simple concept. And now similarly, let me tell you how we can use the underscore in function in variable names. All right. So guys, our temporary variables use underscore for temporary or insignificant variables. What it means? So when you don't need the loop variable, so we can use this underscore as a placeholder. So for an example, let's say if I'm writing here for I in range and five, and I want to repeat a Python, let's say five times. Simple, but right now, let's say I don't want to use this variable. So what I'm doing here, simple, I can pass this underscore. So this loop print Python five times and the loop variable underscore is used because its value is not needed. I don't want the value of I, right? So that's why I have replaced that I with the help of underscore. And guys, similarly, we can use the uh, underscore in the list comprehension as well. So it's a very simple. So for an example, I'm going to define a null list where I can write none for I, I not I underscore in range of five. So simple, I can print this none list five times, none, 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 five times. And guys, similarly, we can use this underscore as a placeholder for unused parameters. So for an example, if you are going to define a function, right? So this underscore can be used as a placeholder for unused parameters. Let me tell you using an example. So here def and here I'm going to define any function when I'm defining x, uh, let's say this one underscore and z, right? And if I want to return x plus z, simple. And now I am calling my function and where I am passing one comma two comma three. So you can see here, let me supply here as a z. So now simple one, plus three become four, right? So right now this particular two, I am going to ignore. 
okay so this is the unused parameters so guys that's how you can use the single underscore now similarly let me talk about the single leading underscore with the help of variable so a single leading underscore in a variable name which indicate that it is intent for internal use only so this is just a convention and does not enforce any kind of restriction so for an example let's say if i am going to define a my class right and here i am going to define my constructor simple and right now let's say i am using here self and underscore is my internal variable equal to any value let's say 42 just an example and now i am going to creating my object of my class and simple i am going to print the object and here dot internal variable so i am getting the output is 42 so guys are you understanding what is happening here so first of all let's say i am going to create my class and here i am going to create an instance of my class and the variable name is object and here i am using a internal variable all right so here the instance variable underscore internal underscore variable right is an instance variable so this underscore in this variable suggests that the variable is intended for internal use only and within the same class and the following a common naming convention in python so guys this particular information gives a signal to other programmer that this variable should not be accessed directly from outside the class okay even though it is a, still technically possible to do so but we can't access this particular variable directly all right so what is the practical use of these kind of example so we can initialize the default very value for instance variable okay and i am going to encapsulate internal state that is not mean to be accessed directly from outside the class all right and guys similarly we will be discuss about double leading underscore so a double leading underscore triggers name mangling where the interpreter changes the name of the variable in a way to avoid conflict with names defined by the subclasses let's say i am going to create my class let's say base class and here again i am going to define my constructor and self at the same i am using here underscore underscore private variable equal to the same value i am going to assign and now i am going to create another class that is called derived class from my base interesting and again the same thing i am using here and now i am using a super function right to call my constructor okay and here the same value i am going to or you can say that same variable i am going to define with different value same variable i am using here now i am going to create a base object of my base class okay simple and now i am going to define a object of my derived class with derived and now let me print base object okay and here i am defining dot and underscore base okay and here private variable okay and similarly i am going to print my derived object and here i will be supply my derived class name underscore underscore private where all right so i will have the answer 42 and 99 so what is the meaning of it i am using a same variable name here and here as well so in this example underscore underscore private variable in the base class right is renamed okay is renamed as underscore base underscore underscore private variable name and similarly this particular variable name okay in the drive class is renamed to the underscore drive underscore underscore private variable okay so guys these kind of technique is name mangling so name mangling is nothing is it is a particular mechanism to avoid name classes in python 
So let's say when a variable is defined with double underscore prefix as we have defined here. So for an example, my class name is a base and I have a variable name underscore underscore private variable. So this particular variable become underscore base underscore underscore private variable and the same for the drive class. So this kind of technique ensure that the private variables in the base class and the drive class do not interface with each other. Okay. So the purpose of the name mangling is a very important. So I want to avoid the name classes. Okay. And I want to, you know, encapsulate my information as well. All right. So this thing you need to keep in mind. And now guys, let's discuss about double leading and trailing underscore. So for an example, any name that is start and end with double underscore, okay, are reserved for special use in Python. So these are often referred to as magic method or sometimes people call thunder method. Let me give you an example. So first of all, I am going to define a class. Let's say again, I am going to define my class. And here I am going to define my constructor. Simple. And now I am going to define my value. And here in the same class as well, guys, I am going to define my another, let's say, a string self. And now I am going to return, let's say, my class with value and here self dot value. Simple. And now I am going to create an object. So object equal to my class. And here I am going to supply any value, let's say 40 or maybe 42, whatever you want, right? And here I am going to declare my object. Now I am calling my object. So here it is giving me a 40. So guys, let's understand this. So first of all, I have created my constructor, okay, to initialize the instance with the provided value. And here I am going to define underscore, underscore, string, underscore, underscore, right? that provide a human readable string representation of the object, right? And these kind of example or these kind of function will help you a lot when, when you are doing debugging and logging. And now I am going to create my object. So for an example, when you print a instance of my class, right? So Python internally call this function as well. Okay. And that function will be print whatever the string you are going to print here. And keep in mind, Overriding the string method, right, is a common practice to provide a meaningful and readable output when instance of a class are printed. So whenever I will be print my instance, every time my string information will be print. All right. So these kind of example you need to keep in mind. And guys, now the last topic about leading underscore in a module name. This is very, very interesting. So let me launch the VS code. And guys, now let me create another folder. The folder name is my package and inside this particular folder i am going to create a file that is init.py now let me create a another file that is called let's say underscore internal module.py and guys let me add another file that is called public underscore module.py simple and here I am going to define a very basic function. So simple public function. And here I am going to return simple. This is a public function. Very simple concept. And guys, similarly in the underscore internal module, I am also creating a, another function that is called internal function. And again, return. This is an internal function. Interesting. And in this init.py, what I am doing here, so from dot public module, I am going to import the public function. Simple. And here, public function. Interesting. So guys, right now I have created these three files. So let me explain here. So first of all, I have created in it dot py and where I have defined the public function. So guys, this line basically specify that only public function should be accessible. Let me give you an example, right? So now I am going to create a, another file that is called main dot py. And here what I'm doing. So from my package, right? My package is my folder name. And I want to import each and everything. 
right? And first of all, I am going to print my public function. Look at this. I am able to access, right? And you remember, right, what I have written. So this particular public function will give me this is this is a public function only as an output. Now what I'm doing here, I am going to print again internal underscore function, which I have declared here in the, in the internal module, right? And now I am using here the except, let's say name error as E, and here I'm going to print my E. All right, now let me try this. So guys, can you guess why it will raise an error? So this will raise a name error because it is not in all function. Okay, in this all, I have only a public function. So let me run this. Let me run from the command prompt. Simple Python main.py. So here I'm getting an exception. You can see here, right? So from dot public module, import public function so i don't have this import error and now what i'm doing here let me try one more thing so from my package i am going to import internal module the same thing same line i have written here but from this my package i was importing each and everything right so i'm not able to access this because this is my you know internal module and here I am writing from my package and I am going to import specifically that particular function. And here, except, again, import error as E. And now I am going to print the my E. Let me do one thing. Let me make a comment. And now let me run this. Let me clear this. So guys, can you see here? I am having the import error, cannot import this name from public function from my package, right? So what is happening here? So I am going to direct import of underscore internal module, all right? So these kind of modules with leading underscore like underscore internal module, which I have created dot py, okay? And these are intended for internal use within a package. And guys, these are not imported with wildcard imports. Wildcard imports means, so for an example here, I have defined from my package import and this wildcard, which means I want to access each and everything from my package. No, you can't access this, right? Because this is defined with underscore internal module, okay? So as I just mentioned, so they are not imported with wildcard imports. And guys, these kind of internal module, right? Underscore internal modules, okay? They signal to user of a package that they are not mean to be accessed directly, okay? So for an example, if you are thinking you are going to create a very necessary information with some any XYZ information, but you don't want to give directly access of a public API, it could be anything. So in case you want to prevent, so you can use these kind of internal module okay with leading underscore all right i hope you have learned a lot of new things in this session so guys you can use these kind of stuff in your python project and literally they will help you a lot all right and if you are facing any difficulty to use any kind of stuff from this session please let me know in the comment box and for now thanks for watching and have a great day yeah Sometimes I get so mad, there's no control in me. My thoughts get so bad, I'm like, I might grab a bat, I don't know. My wrath, my blood boils.